Hello everyone, welcome to another edition of In Nature's Realm. Now today, I'm off to Newlands Reservoir again, because the mayfly are hatching and the trout are feeding on them. And to say I'm happy is an absolute understatement, because when this fishing starts and the trout feeding on the mayfly, it is just superb. Now today, I'm going to teach you all the different stages of the mayfly for the beginners. I'm going to show you what flies to use for each of those stages and we're going to see hopefully some great fly fishing action. So sit back, relax and I'll see you on the water real soon. So uh, there's the spillway, water flowing over, which is fantastic, water's beautiful and clear, and um, which creates the start of the creek, and there's the creek down there, look at that water, absolutely magnificent. And there you've got the creek down there. Good fishing down the creek. Um, but I've got more pressing pressing things to do in regards to the Mayfly hatch. So let's continue on. There you go, mate. <clears throat> Any uh, duns hatching? Not seen yet. Okay, no worries. Yeah, there's been reports of some duns, so okay. I think they're just starting, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Hmm. Yeah, they've had a stocking of um, little uh, newly released trout, you know? They're not ready. ready. Yeah, they're ready. Uh, quick release. All right, mate. Well, uh, have a good day. Yeah, you too, no worries, sir. All right. Yeah, here's a nice spot. We could possibly see some dun hatches and some trout rising. Alright. 
as we always do when we observe give the area a good 10 minutes of observation and then we'll be back to make an assessment after that all right now for all you beginners or people just starting out in fly fishing I'm going to show you the first stage of the mayfly now mayfly nymphs is the first stage and they're on the bottom underneath rocks underneath uh, wood wooden debris um, that type of, of bottom terrain material so let's have a look we'll lift up a few rocks and a few bits of wood okay now here's something over here if you can see just down here we've got bits of stick and bits of wood there might be some nymphs on the leaf there so we'll check it out Jesus okay there we go we've got nymphs there there we go I'll put it out of the sun right there's two nymphs just there one nymph right there there he is there that's the nymph now he's under this woody debris and there's one on my finger see on my finger there okay he's a mayfly nymph that one there's a bit bigger so he's probably ready to hatch out into the next stage the done so there he is there the mayfly nymph so to imitate that fly we would take out of our fly box a brown seals for a new a smith emerger or something like that so that's the first stage right, let's put these blokes back there he goes this one back down now for this stage all right <coughs> So, for that stage, or this first stage of the mayfly, this is the type of nymph you would try. Either uh, a brown seals fur nymph. And that's what the brown seals fur nymph would look like. There. Got a pheasant tail, fibers for the tail, brown seals for, for the body, pheasant tail, fibers for the wing case, and more seals for, for the forex area there. Now that fly there will work its way, well you'd work it around the bottom where the actual nymphs are. And then what happens with the nymph that we just saw, the natural, he will rise to the surface and become the emerging nymph. And um, we sh if we see an emerging nymph, a trout should rise to it and take that nymph. And then we'd put on an emerging nymph pattern, which would be another fly that I'll show you in a minute. So when the second stage of the mayfly begins, I'll try and get a natural. And there, we've got a rise just in front of us. How about that? I don't know if you can see it. Right there. All right. All right. <coughs> Now I'm starting to see just the odd rise here and there from some trout and they would be obviously because I can't see duns they would be taking the emerging nymph now emerging nymph looks like a nymph that is just hatching out and here's the fly that we will use this fly here is called the smith emerger and it's got marabou tail and body with a foam forex and head and that basically floats it in the water and the body sits it down so it sits right in the surface film so what we do is we cast this out to where the rise is or where we think there are some trout and we just let it sit and float and make sure we're connected to the fly line so if it takes we can strike and we'll be connected so that's the next stage of the mayfly the emerging nymph well, let's give it a go
sometimes you need to retrieve any slack line but sometimes it can pay to just put a bit of a jiggle into it just a bit of movement just to attract the trout and that can work wonders all right i'm going to put one in here right i can see me if there so it's sitting nicely Let's see if a trout will come up. Okay, there we have it done hatching out of the uh, nymphal shark, and um, that's a great. Um, great period when we just saw it pop out of the uh, shark there so as you can see there's the mayfly done and the nymphal shark he's come out from there and he's flew away that done and he'll uh, continue to fly to the edges and then become a spinner but that was uh that was pretty good all right now another good fly to represent the mayfly done is a highland done can use a cripple done, a highland done, um, a number of different patterns, but that's another favourite of mine. I'm gonna tie that on right now, see how I go with that. All right, there we go. Beautiful condition orange spinner. I just scooped him off the water there. The sun's on him, so you can see him nice and brightly there. So there's your orange spinner. You've got the orangey brown tight body and a lot of people call them a red spinner but i don't know why but you can sort of you can sort of tell there's a tint of sort of reddish yeah yeah exactly and the clear wings of the spinner so that's beautiful we've got that and then the last stage is the spent spinner and they're just that spinner there but his wings will lay flat out on the surface there so let's put him back and I'll show you the flight to imitate this bloke. So there he goes. He's drifting nicely there. And <laughs> and and there we have. I'm a quarry red that'll imitate that orange spinner beautifully. You can see you've got the, the hackle body which gives the segmentation plus more floatability, the main hackle, and then um, the actual body material is a bright orange colour um, with the uh, very fine um, microfibers for the tail. So, um, yeah, tie a few of them up, guys, and um, you should. Uh, have a lot of success. All right. Now there is a spent spinner. Don't know if you can see, but right there above my finger, there he goes. So there you go. There's a spent spinner, and he's just in the process of, um, well, he's dying, and. Um, when they're outstretched in the water like that, the trout love the food on. And that's where the rump spinner comes in as a great representation. Alright, job done. So, when we have a spent spinner, the best fly to represent that is the rump spinner. And I'll show you the rump spinner right now.
and there we can see in my hand a rump spinner. We've got the materials, white um, high vis uh, material there for the actual uh, outstretched wings. We've got the legs of the mayfly outstretched and the tail fibers and the orange body. And um, the rump spinner would have to be the best representation of a spent spinner that there is in my opinion and uh, hard to tie but very rewarding and will catch fish there's no worries about that and the main time that you find the spent spinners is um, in the early morning and late evening um, when they uh, accumulate with the wave action and the wind so uh, get to the lee shore and um, that's where you will find the spent spinners all right I'll try and find another one to give you a better or a closer look at the spent trout. Just rose in front of this willow tree. Took, took an orange spinner and I've got a fly orange, I mean we're quite red out there right now. And, um, the wind's kicked up, it's turned right around, so that's going to make things difficult, but we'll see what we can do. Okay. Definite wind change now. Well, day started off really great. It was a northerly wind, northwesterly, very light. Orange spinners and duns hatching everywhere. Trout rising everywhere. Admittedly, there was a lot of little ones, but in amongst them, there were some good fish. But this place is getting heavily fished, and uh, heavily fished by all methods of fishing bait fishing, lures, and particularly fly. And these trout are getting a great education. So in calm conditions, you're gonna have to get your leader down to very fine tippets. So that, um, and even then, it's gonna be really difficult. Um, I 
can see the millions of naturals with um, nothing leading away from them. And then you've got this uh, leader trailing from the flight. Um, it makes things um, very, very uh, difficult um, to get the trout um, to be fooled into taking your flight. Now the wind's changed. Couldn't even be as complete solely, but it's beautiful. It's very cool at the moment. It's probably the temperatures that are perfect. Oh, I'd reckon 18, 19, I'd reckon right now. And um, it just looks beautiful. You know, and this is what fly fishing is all about. In my opinion, it's uh, everything around the catching of a fish. Beautiful scenery, beautiful waves of the lake, tussocks swaying, and tree branches are swaying. The wind in your face feels beautiful. It's just magnificent. You got to experience it, whether it be fly fishing some other form of outdoor sport or hobby you know, get out and experience the outdoors it's just fantastic it's nature it's being in nature's realm see you next episode